Okay, so we're at Home Depot and we're looking for some pretty arid plants. Oh my god, but look at all the other plants. Okay, <laughs> how much is this one? This one's really nice and uh, bushy. Oh, this is really cute. Look at this. This is awesome. Well, hopefully it's not super expensive. I think I'm gonna grab me some of these. Oh my god, what on earth is this? It is so shiny. One of the employees went to go get me a card. All right, so there's one more thing I have to go grab. I look like a mess, I, I just finished work, but um, I just have to go grab um, a new reptile rack that I'm actually putting in my bedroom. I'm um, starting to put a few tanks in my bedroom now, so I'm just gonna go grab that quickly before I head out of here. So the inspiration I caught from this habitat is actually from Pinterest. There's a lot of great stuff on Pinterest, but ultimately these were a few of my ideas came from. Like that one's kind of cute, and oh my god, all of these are actually really cute. Look at all these great ideas, guys. But this was the one that I pulled the most inspiration from, so I'll click on it here for you guys. I really wanted to do this upper ledge area here and kind of do like a little pathway. So um, I'm gonna try to sort of replicate this, but into a more desert type setup. Whoever did this, you're awesome. Thanks for the inspo. So this is what we have right now. This is the tortoise habitat that I DIY'd. So I already have some substrate from the old habitat that I just dismantled and I put that in there, but we still need a lot more to fill it. And I also have a 48 inch 10.0 uh, Repti Sun here for lighting. And then here, I'm just gonna be clipping on this uh, 50 watt bulb onto the side. It just clips onto the side there and then you can direct and point a little dusty clean that off then i'm gonna turn that on so we have just a little bit more light to work with so this is the substrate i'm using it's outback red by exoterra it's the stone desert a lot of egyptian tortoise keepers will actually use oyster shell as substrate i've also seen some use this kind of more naturalistic looking substrate as well and that's kind of what I wanted to go for was a naturalistic setup. But I also still want to try using the oyster shell at some point. So I actually will be using a mix of both and I will show you later how I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and add some soil into the enclosure. I don't want the whole enclosure to just be sand. Egyptian tortoises and a lot of other desert species as well will seek refuge in usually cooler and moist uh, rodent burrows to keep away from the blazing hot desert sun during the middle of the day. So they don't just like it dry 24-7 all the time. You want to give them small microclimates to choose from. So even though the overall habitat is going to be a desert one. I'm gonna put some soil in some areas to give my tortoise some more uh, humid areas in the enclosure to choose between because humidity for baby tortoises, even a desert species, is still really important to keep an eye on. So I'm just gonna put some soil under here and I've actually dug out um, some of the uh, some of the sand so that there's not just a whole bunch of sand under here. It also gives a nice kind of softer area for the tortoise to choose between. So he can choose between, or she, uh, can choose between a more um, drier sort of substrate and terrain, or they can go into a more softer and uh, humid spot if uh, they do please. Some Egyptian tortoise keepers will use a fogger to help with the humidity, but I personally just like to mist this area um, as often as possible and keep it moist. All right, that's looking pretty good. And I even put some under there because my tortoise likes to hide under there sometimes as well. Next up, I'm gonna make the little oyster shell trail. I didn't wanna do a full setup 
and just oyster shell. But the idea behind it is that they can use it as a substrate and if they accidentally ingest it, it's 100% safe for them and even beneficial for them because it's a source of calcium. So I'm actually gonna put this around kind of like the eating area so that when my Egyptian tortoise eats, uh, they'll be surrounded by all this oyster shell and have the option to pick at it if they do please. Just, just wait, just wait, I'm gonna do something cool. Okay, so I've kind of like paved this way for this little oyster shell path that I'm gonna make. So the oyster shell path, I'm going to start over here and uh, make its way around. And that's the finished result. So it starts from the ramp there, and then we have a little pathway making its way to the main eating area that will be right here. All right, next steps I think is to uh, just put some of the decorations in. This isn't like the prettiest of uh, decoration, but this is just a little hide that uh, hides under here that my Egyptian tortoise can go into when they want it to be more humid. Some of these uh, nice red rock. Yes, I like that right there. Got some more rocks. This is some really nice purple slate. And I like to use this for my tortoise to eat off of. So I'll put like some veggies and stuff down on here. And then when they eat it, it will help to grind down their beak and file it down every time. The feeding rock. I like to call this one the basking rock. I might end up moving some of these around, but this is the hardscape. Then we have a shallow little water dish and you'll definitely want it to be shallow for these guys. Something that, you know, they can just step into. And last but not least, let's bring in some of our plants. They do really seem to love like kind of hangy, kind of bushy sort of type plants that they can like hide underneath and seek shelter. I have another smaller one right here. I'm going to put it into this corner. Oh no, I'm ruining the path. It's okay. We can fix the path. To be quite honest, uh, my tortoise will probably ruin it anyway. <laughs> Here's those uh, cute little succulents that we bought. This one can just go randomly right here because I feel like it. Wow, oh wow, this is actually looking really nice. I also have these little fake succulents here that I bought off of Amazon. Thought it would add a little more character and color to the enclosure. My mom found me this nice piece of wood and uh, it looks pretty cool and wonky. Last but not least, I'm going to just crush up some of these sepia bones and just spread them throughout the enclosure so that my tortoise can uh, pick at them when they please to. I know it seems like we have a lot of calcium going on here, but that is exactly what we need. Lots of calcium for the tortoise. And of course, a little hygrometer. I'm gonna be getting some new ones in the new year. Uh, these ones I just bought like off of Amazon as like a package deal and they're not the greatest, but they give me a bit of an idea of what's going on down here. And there we have it. All right, let's take a look at the final results. Honestly, the last and final touch that I would have to do is just to put like a hide up there to make it exactly like the one that's uh, on Pinterest. But besides that, I am so flippin' happy. I think this looks amazing.
So I'll show you what we got going on in the enclosure, even though you just saw me set it up. So we have the upper ledge area here that my tortoise can walk up onto and explore on. Then underneath that, I have this softer, more humid area that I like to spray a little more than the rest of the habitat. Then I have the little basking area here, have this nice flat rock for them to sit on and um, just a little plant and the hygrometer. Then here we have the oyster shell trail that leads from the food rock all the way to the ramp going up. Then we just have more plants and decorations throughout the enclosure. A water dish is essential. Then this stick here that's actually really nice kind of acts as like this nice like archway for my tortoise to go under to reach uh, their food dish. I know that when I first got my Egyptian tortoise, the breeder told me to keep this setup uh, more simple as he mentioned that the babies are rather clumsy which I thought was absolutely adorable, but made complete sense. So for the first while, I have been keeping the habitat rather simple. I feel like my tortoise is like a little more grown up now and a little more confident and uh, hasn't had any tank accidents or anything, no flipping on the back. So uh, as long as there's no places for them to do that, all should be good. And then on the edge of my Egyptian tortoise's habitat, I bought this really cute uh, just basket from the dollar store that I can put all their little common items in. I got like the calcium spray and multivitamin, their scale and their little book that I keep all the notes about my tortoise in and their weight, flower topper, you know, all that kind of good stuff. And then that can just hang out here and be accessible to me when I need it. Last but not least, it's time to introduce my Egyptian tortoise. And here's little Eden, guys. Look how big they've gotten. Oh my goodness. Go check out your new home. Well guys, I'm so happy with how the new habitat turned out and it looks like little Eden here is enjoying it as well and looks like uh, they're gonna go away and hide now. Next week I will have a, another video out and I'm gonna show you guys how I actually made this uh, tortoise habitat here from scratch. It took a while for me to actually make this, so that's why it took a while for me to have these videos out. It's gonna be a pretty fun and crafty project, so stick around for that. If you like this video, then give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below, and hit that subscribe button if you wanna see updates on my pets and videos like this in the future. Stay weird everyone, and I will see you all next time.